the maximum listing moment a ship can withstand. Uh, the basic sine curve is like this and for the similar range if you talk about the cosine curve it will be like this. The listing moment or upsetting moment which we apply to a GZ curve we will use the range from 0 to 90. If here is the normal GZ curve and uh, if we talk about a listed ship Listed shift means the list is caused because of the shift of the weight. Then G of the ship moves parallel to the deck and in the listed posture the G1 and B1 they come in one vertical line. So here is a diagram for a listed ship. This distance GG1 can be represented here on the Y axis and suppose this is uh, say 82 degrees and say this is 90 degrees if I draw a cosine curve of this cosine curve of this section that is from 0 to 90 this is the curve for listing moment or upsetting moment gz1 cos theta and where this curve cuts the gz curve gives you the list that will be caused the list or the angle or inclination at which the equilibrium will be achieved. Now, if you look at these two curves, that is GG1 cos theta curve and GZ curve, what happens in a situation where the listing moment curve has got GG1 more than the maximum GZ of the ship? Then, what happens if such a listing moment is caused to the ship? The ship will not be able to withstand that listing moment and the ship will capsize because the ship's writing capability is beyond the listing moment. The maximum GZ is more than the GZ1 that is caused. Okay? Whereas, if the listing moment is of this order, the ship can take the listing moment. She will settle down on this list, but she will not capsize. Let us now understand the effect of form on the GZ curve or uh, to be precise, let us take an experiment ship, say box vessel. Let us change the beam of the vessel without changing the freeboard and draft. And in the next situation, we will change the freeboard of the ship without changing the beam and draft. Let us see. Here is a basic GZ curve and here is a basic experiment ship. Here is a GZ curve. Now what happens is, what I will do is, I will change the beam of the ship without changing the draft of the ship. Draft remains same, freeboard remains same. I just increase the beam of the ship. Now we know the usual formula that Bm is equal to B square upon 12D. By changing the beam, there is a much higher effect on the beam. The stability improves in a much better proportion the ship will become stiff and now when the ship becomes stiff what happens to the GZ curve the initial path changes what happens is initially where this was the GM this has become the GM now also where this was the initial deck as immersion now the deck as immersion has gone to a smaller angle so the angle of deck as immersion has changed in fact it has reduced which means that the point of contraflection which was over here earlier has shifted to a smaller angle. So this is what happens when you increase the beam. Now as far as the size of the GZ curve is concerned, it slightly increases in height and also in the range. So there is an overall increase, there is an overall improvement in the size of the GZ curve but not considerable. It is there but it is not very high. Now in the next leg what we will do is we will increase the freeboard of the ship without changing the breadth. Now when the freeboard has increased you can see straight away that the deck has immersion will happen at a later angle. So 
the point of counter fracture which had shifted initially from here to here it will shift to a higher angle the point to be noted is by increasing the freeboard I am not changing the B of the ship so BM will not change which means that the GM of the vessel will be same which means that initial part will be same as original curve the original curve is hugged but there is a point of counter flexure at much later stage and the growth of the GZ curve is healthy both in upward direction and horizontal direction this is the effect of change of freeboard so we have seen the effect of change of beam and change of freeboard when we change the beam counterflexure shifts to a smaller angle there is a growth of GZ curve in vertical and horizontal direction but not appreciable and also the initial part of the GZ curve becomes more steep because the GM has improved now when the freeboard is more then deck has immersion will occur at a later stage much later stage the size of GZ curve improves both vertically and horizontally to an appreciable extent and at the same time the initial part of the GZ curve is same as original curve this is because the GM is not changing so this was the effect of the form or change of form on the GZ curve now there is one important and interesting feature of the GZ curve I'll tell you initially the GZ curve is concave in nature and after some time the concavity changes to convexity where the concavity changes to convexity that point is called point of counterflexure and it relates to the approximate deck edge immersion why is it so let us try and understand for that let us look at this diagram of heel I am showing you the box vessel inclined to an angle of deck edge immersion now what happens is B goes to B1 because of the buoyancy of the wedge shifting from B to B1 in fact BB1 is equal to V that is the volume of the wedge multiplied by BV1 upon capital V so you can see the writing lever basically is proportional to BB1 right and BB1 is actually a shift of center of buoyancy center of gravity does not shift during the rolling so can we say that the writing lever which is created is directly proportional to small v that is the volume of the wedge and BB1 that is the distance between the centroid of the wedges now small v will continue to increase as the ship heals it will increase even beyond the deck edge immersion whereas BB1 that is a transfer separation between the centroid of centroids of the wedges will increase only till the deck edge immersion and can you imagine can you visualize that if the water line goes beyond deck edge immersion the water line would be something like this and the centroid of the wedge starts returning towards the center line so what happens is beyond deck edge immersion this continues to increase but this starts decreasing so the rising characteristic of a GZ curve is represented by concavity that means both these factors are increasing and what happens beyond deck edge immersion the GZ value is increasing but with smaller intensity right that is because although V is increasing but BB1 has started decreasing so that characteristic is represented by convexity so I think it must be clear from this explanation as to why this point of counterfracture approximately represents the deck as immersion now uh, we will look at some more features of the GZ curve and one of such things which is often asked by the examiners is when we draw a GZ curve why when a tangent is drawn at the origin at 57.3 degrees it represents 
the GM of the vessel as you will read it on GZ axis. What is the reason for that? As I have told, emphasized many a times before also, small angle of heel is only up to 6 or 7 degrees. The reason for that is still 6 or 7 degrees. The initial part of the GZ curve is like a straight line drawn tangent at the origin. So this same line which is drawn tangent at the origin when extended till 57.3 degrees can give you the GM value. Suppose this is a small angle theta which is up to 7 degrees and if we say this is the GZ right now this GZ is equal to GM sine theta this is 0 degrees this is theta degrees this is 57.3 this is also O the origin and let's call this point A B and then C D now if you look at the triangle O A B it is similar to the triangle O C D so because these triangles are similar OAB and OCD can I say CD upon AB is equal to 57.3 divided by theta degrees okay I am just relating the two sides right AB upon CD is equal to theta upon 57.3 or CD upon AB is equal to 57.3 divided by theta. Now let us look at this part. We are talking about small angles and for the small angle theta we may say sine theta tends to theta. What is the meaning of tends to theta? Sine theta wants to become equal to theta or theta wants to become equal to sine theta but it can actually never become equal. Uh, to understand it practically for small values, if you want to find out sine theta, you can actually do theta upon 57.3. So you don't have to have scientific calculator for small angles. If you want sine theta, just tap theta upon 57.3. So if we write this over here, then GZ is equal to GM into theta upon 57.3. So we can write GZ is equal to GM theta upon 57.3. As you can see in the diagram, instead of AB, I can write GZ and instead of GZ, I can write GM theta upon 57.3. When I do that, then I get CD upon GM theta into 57.3 is equal to 57.3 upon theta gets cancelled. This gets cancelled and I get GM is equal to C. So here is the simple proof and what we understand here is if GZ curve is drawn accurately and if you can draw a tangent at origin at 57.3 the ordinate that is read represents the GM.